In this series, we'll try to get a rideable trail established through my backyard. Riley here helps me a ton of filming and editing, and luckily, he's even better with his shovel than he is in Premiere Pro. Neither of us are professional trail builders, so join us as we stumble our way through some two-wheeled fun. So last night after Riley went home, I packed the jump down a little bit, both the takeoff and the landing. Um, this jump works way better than we expected. It is a little bit of a bummer having to sprint into it from the turn track back there. I'm kind of thinking that hillside right there could make a wonderful roll-in. To have a roll-in would mean, yeah, sure, a little bit less pedaling, but a more consistent amount of speed going into this. Well, Riley noticed when we were watching the footage back that if I hit the jump pretty good, I'd often land like, you can see tire marks right here on the side. So we should probably turn this into a little bit more of like a riding surface. When you do get high there, it sets you up for a good high low and like naturally, you kind of pump this roller thing. You end up carrying pretty good speed right here. You've got a jump, you've got a pump. So we were thinking, put a jump right over here. There's this old nurse log right here. So right here, we'll have to do the nurse jump. Uh, just some kind of a step up, try to clear the nurse log. So other idea is after you land this jump and you start coming in and pumping, we could definitely put some kind of like a long and low jump right here that kind of hips to the left that then curves and catches the next downhill with a couple more jumps. I don't know where, where makes the most sense to continue the line. And if we build the step up, then we at least have like a two hit track so we can pound out laps and test out bike setups and all that. What do you think, Riley? Should we start on the step up? I think we started the step up. Riding it yesterday, you were naturally turning to the right. Yeah. And so we may as well go with what feels natural. Let's start with the step up. It doesn't work, we do something else. Let's do it. I think we rake up some crap and then pull some ferns and maybe widen this guy while we're at it. Oh, the landing? And then, yeah. yeah. And then just work our way back down. There's a little spider on the camera. Oh, I should get time lapse going. Hi, spider. Let's time lapse this. Going for a ride. Meow. That is a lot of turning. That jump is fun. If we were to build up a little bit more of a berm right here, I think it would carry a lot more speed. We could almost do a tiny setup jump. A little setup jump out of the berm almost? Yeah. Shark fin is what the cool kids say. Ooh. We gotta just make the jump and see what that's like and then work on all the little, little treats. Oh, nice. And you utilized the uh, new section we built too. Yeah, let's try that a, a couple more times. We'll get three attempts and then we'll start building a lip. Kind of went in the same spot as the first run. If this was hard packed and not Duffy Ferny, I think you carry decent speed. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Oh. Hi, Huckleberry. I was offline. I came inside too much. I should have turned more in the air. Yeah, I heard a little thud. Okay, but like right here, all of them are ending up in the same spot. So that's good to see. It's all like right here. Like the lines out have all been yonder. So cool. Okay. Yeah, I think we just gotta, what, dig and pack, dig and pack. <laughs> Let's get the shovels. <laughs> oh, come on, Rock. We're just gonna go next to you. Don't cock block us. Don't rock block us. Yeah, don't rock block us. Lift with your back, Jeff. Yeah. It's all in the back. Log cam on the Minimoto here. This is sketchy. Front brake only. We'll go this way. Oh, oh, oh. All right, got the vlog cam. Nice. Uh, we haven't checked in for a while to talk about our rock pile. We could do that real quick with our crappy camera here. I guess if this was real life trail building, we'd have like a campfire going right there. We'd have an 18 pack of Rainier over there. We'd both be wearing flannel. It'd be raining. There'd be snow all over the place. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, yeah, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, we stacked up a few rocks to uh, save piling. That's probably half an hour worth of dirt we just saved by spending 25 minutes gathering rocks. So <laughs> we're definitely ahead here. I want this right here to be the low spot in the trail. There's like a natural bathtub to drain water into right there. Also, if this is the deep point, you'll be gathering speed until the last possible moment before you shoot back up and send it 
take your hands off or whatever you do in the air when sending. We're gonna start digging and we'll run a time lapse and you guys can enjoy. And cut. So uh, this is some never seen before footage of motorcyclists fixing his damage on a bicycle jump. We got two obstacles we're up against. Obstacle number one, this big old dinosaur egg got laid right here. And we couldn't get the dinosaur egg out because it was fully encased by roots. Still hasn't come out all the way, all the way out yet. That's a big root. It's like when they put this big rock here, they surrounded it with medium sized rocks and roots to make sure you couldn't get it out first try. So it's a cool riddle. They did a good job, but I think we're gonna get them. Oh, so the biggest rock we've found yet is right in front of our takeoff. So we're gonna try to just pick it up, get a strap under it, and try to yoink it out back towards where you guys are, towards Riley. We're gonna have to do ratchet strap to ratchet strap here. This is pretty optimistic, but it's worth trying. Should I stick my whole hand underneath it? That's a good call, yeah, kind of like the people with the alligator's mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> Two roots they can slide on would be kind of slick. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm sick of filming, Riley. Just trying to watch and film at the same time, and that does not work. So this rock weighs a good, oh, I don't know, 1,700 pounds. It's pretty heavy. These are only 10,000 pound ratchet straps, so they're probably going to break but it's all I got at our disposal. So we're using what we got, even if it's not the best tool for the job per se. And if I just pull on these straps, it moves the rock. So see if we can get this rock uphill. Oh, sometimes you don't need the right tool. You just need a tool. Hey, I call that a win. Oh, cramp in my arm. Wow. <laughs> I haven't had a cramp. I gotta get some of that element going. That was. A real tinge of, oh, oh, it's coming back. I'm not kidding, I'm gonna go have some element. That stuff's legit for when you're cramping. Like, oh, I haven't had an arm cramp in so long. That's insane. We have not been drinking water all day out here, so it's time. Uh, I'll put this thing down, I'll help you out here. <laughs> So we've been yanking on this rock for the last hour and a half, two hours. Now that the rock's here on the flat ground, we're gonna start rolling it downhill. That's a very optimistic way of saying it. Maybe we'll put it between these two ferns and then we'll turn it into a good spot to do bike reviews. And yeah, we made good progress today, but hopefully we're able to hit this jump by the time this video goes live. <laughs> we can only hope. So after the fiasco you guys saw two minutes ago, trying to use a six foot long piece of railroad track to leverage out a rock, I went to Harbor Freight, spent the 20 bucks on a proper rock bar. And to prevent destroying my arms using tiny little ratchet straps to pull out 500 pound rocks, I bought a real come along. So if we find more rocks today, between the rock bar and the come along, it won't hurt any backs, no hernias, no nothing. We're gonna do it right today. It's gonna take the sticker off, but it clearly says do not remove, so. We don't need to go much more like in line almost with that little plant. Yeah. And that'll be inside and then right there. Oh! 
rock bar has already been put to use. That's yeah. good stuff. Glad I didn't take that sticker off. I don't want to make this bar not work. It's a good size rock. Yeah. I'd say so. It's probably this one's baby. So I'm over here working with my rock bar trying to get this pile of stuff going. <laughs> Suddenly it gets quiet. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of guilt, a little bit of shame. Oh, I feel bad. I broke your tool. Uh, there was a rock here that I could almost get out my hand. You can see I got a little wobble there. But I figured, hey, I'll just take the pick, get underneath it, wedge it out. And uh, the pick didn't exactly like that. And it's now two pieces of a pick. I've never seen um, a, the actual pick heads break. I've seen the handles break plenty. Yeah, I just uh, must be stronger than the normal person who breaks a pick. You think uh, JB Weld will get that? Uh, maybe some duct tape. The cool part is you have a sweet scythe now. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Back to it. We're about five minutes into life without a pick after I broke it uh, and found a nice little rock living down in here. Uh, but since we are sans pick, it's kind of tough to get in there and get it out. Jeff here is going to make a Harbor Freight run <laughs> and get a couple tools while I do my best to just keep uncovering this. Unless um, you want to go to Harbor Freight and I'll work on digging. Oh, I'm good. I like playing in the dirt. That's what the overalls are for. So Jeff is still at Harbor Freight. He actually just left uh, and I have stayed behind to try and kind of excavate this rock and uh, I'm finding that it's a bit bigger than we expected. We originally thought went from about here to here. Turns out it now goes all the way down here. That rock might actually have to be part of the jump because even though we have a come along, that's uh, probably a few hours of digging that bad boy out, which quite honestly sounds like more work than it's worth. So we'll see what Jeff says. Jeez. Ooh. Did this Whoa. just break? <laughs> so I just went to Harbor Freight and I bought this little five pounder. It's the only pickaxe they had, but um, I'm swinging it and it's, uh, it's not as good as the old one. This handle being fiberglass is super flimsy and it's not making much progress. So I kind of want to sharpen the ax portion of the pickaxe. Tools are always better if you modify them. And I should be wearing safety glasses. So maybe we'll change both those. Hey, real quick, before we go sharpen that, you already know that that rock's a lot bigger than we expected it to be, but what do you want to do about it? Let's get the roots gone and then make this jumpable so we can send it right now. Cause I think we need to find out where the landing is and then we can deal with pulling that thing out another day and we have a bit more time to burn. Okay, we'll sharpen this up, get those roots out of the way, make a lip and then we'll send it. All the usual. I know like the sharper I make this, the weaker it's gonna be, but that's definitely better. I was gonna try and come in from this side to make it maybe just a touch sharper, but I mean, one hit on a rock and none of that's gonna matter. So if we did this right, first cut, this root's gonna slice all the way through. Nope. Yeah, that seems better. my 500 pound street bike. <laughs> Look at that jump, that thing looks beautiful. Good work, Riley. Thank you. Okay, I'll uh, see if I can get out of here. I'm gonna try to go around. Hopefully I don't get stuck in the woods. Oh, my jump. Look at this. 
Look at this mess. Guys, look at this. This is amazing. I can't believe, I, I never thought we would have such a cool looking jump line. Everyone say thanks to Riley for his uh, ideas and help making this happen because I could not do this myself. We've been working hard on that takeoff. We had to pull that huge rock out, do a lot of digging, trying really hard to keep that nurse log unmolested because those huckleberries are going off in the summertime. So uh, now's the moment we put our uh, shovel where our mouth is and we try to go off the jump. And this is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna let us know if the angle of the jump's appropriate, if the whole thing will work. And then it also let us know if we should put the landing where we think we should. Anyhow, uh, I'm nervous. Let's jump this. Let's do it. What do you think? I gotta warm up a little bit. Do that a bunch more. I'll try it, we'll see what'll happen. <laughs> Barely made it. Yeah. I'll try it again with more commitment. Maybe I'll try another bike. Thus far, I've only hit this on the Minimoto and on the big old Transition Spire. I like that Spire, it's a fun bike and it's big. It's great for big jumps. These are not big jumps. So I grabbed my little Stump Jumper Evo, 150 travel bike instead of 170. I think this will work a little bit better. I hope so. I want to go higher and not smack the nurse log. Let's try it. Barely cleared it, but I made it a little better. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's definitely better. <laughs> I want to go like irresponsibly high. We got to do more work in the corner. Try it again. Cleared it. <laughs> I want to go higher. I want to go bigger. Got a little dirt on there or what? Yeah, it's been oh, there all geez. day. Oh gosh. A little lone booger. Bush lead. guy. I, I believe my middle name is either Matt Jones or Sam Reynolds. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, the jump line is at least somewhat rideable. Let us know what we should do in the next video, because clearly we need some more speed to clear this little nurse log. Maybe we need some rollers. Maybe we need a berm. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for joining us. This has been a ton of fun. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you down in those comments. Thanks, everyone. Whoa! <laughs>